Hello and welcome back to Football Again from the only English language podcast dedicated to Armenian football. I'm your host, Adam, and I am joined here by the usual suspects in Chadens, Armen, and Tito. Uh, how are you gentlemen doing? Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Good We are coming off the back of a 3-1 loss to Sweden in the second friendly in the June fixtures. Uh, Sweden, who were gearing up uh, to play in the Euros, uh, put on a very good first half display and showed their class. And um, Armenia bounced back a little bit, and uh, we'll dive a little bit into that. But first, with the starting lineups. Uh, Joaquin Kaparos deployed a 4-4-2 today, as usual, and he started up top with uh, Adamian, who was just voted into the uh, TSG Hoffenheim's team of the season. Yay, Sako. Yay. Now find a new club. And uh, his, his, partner, <laughs> his partner for this match was Artur Miranian, uh, the Urardu forward. The left attacking midfielder was Hakop Hakopian, and Vahan Bichakchan got his first start for the national team on the right side. Eduard Svertian and Wobemar Bangulo uh, were the center midfield partnerships for this game. And uh, Kamo Hovanesian was captain, starting at left back. The center back partnership was Kalisir and Daron Voskanian, who uh, came in, unfortunately, again for Haroyan, who sustained an injury in his last match for Astana. Uh, so he is kind of being uh, watched a little more carefully and just being rehabilitated by the national team rather than mean risk because he is a new La Liga center back for Cadiz. It has been since confirmed. Uh, and <laughs> starting at right back is uh, Jao Jordi Munro Ararat and in goal, David Yurchenko. Uh, Admin, walk us through Sweden's lineup. Go- goalkeeper was Olsen. Defense was left back Bengtsson, uh, center back Danielsson, who scored the goal. Victor Lindelof, Mkhitaryan's acquaintance from Manchester United. Right back was Lustig. In the middle, superstar Emil Forsberg. Uh, center backs were Ekdal and Olsen. And right midfielder Larsson. And up top, very dangerous uh, attacking duo with Kulusevski from UE and Isak from Real Sociedad. Tough, tough opposition. So this was a world-class lineup. I mean, this Sweden side obviously qualified for the Euros. They're a fantastic team, very team-oriented group, and they play very good football, and we saw that today. Uh, Let's go over the goals first before we get into our likes, dislikes, and improvements. So, In the 16th minute, Sweden won a free kick from about 40 yards out or so. And uh, Forsberg took the free kick, as you would expect. And David Yurchenko dove to his near post on the right side. And he was unfortunately, I don't know exactly what happened, but he, to put it mildly, he messed up. Uh, I think think a little bit of of the fault can be blamed on the pitch. A little bit. Yes, the, the pitch conditions were something that, that Armin did point out uh, while we were watching the game together. Uh, very patchy and very muddy, which considering it's a world-class stadium, yeah. you think they, the groundskeeper would have taken better care of that. But alas, he did get a little bit on the ball, but it went in. Um, and it was not a good start. I mean, we had a solid five minutes of possession, very good, strong play. And then Armenia just seemed to collapse. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) second goal came from Danielson in the 34th minute. And that was, again, another set-piece situation, this time from a corner kick, uh, where I believe it was Artur Miranian slipped and fell while trying to mark Danielson. And it was a free header, easy goal. So I think going back to what we talked about in that Croatia game, where we conceded a goal from corner kicks, these set-piece situations, for some reason, aren't going anywhere. Chadens, this was something that you had brought up uh, in, in our last episode in our review of the Croatia game. What do you think is causing us to not be able to handle these set-piece situations? I think we said it, we said, we said it several times. Probably organization. Uh, Armin actually uh, agrees with that too. Organization, communication... Um, we also said last time that it's not, 
it's not like we're we have short players. It's just it's just organization, I guess. Yeah, and it, and again, just like mm-hmm. I said, Miranian was the person who was marking, and he was one of the he's one of the tallest players we have. So <laughs> it was it was a no, very. He's, he's not that tall though. He's he, he's average. Yeah, but it doesn't make Armenian sense. Though. He's sense of the height though. He's taller than Sako. Is he? He's, yeah. You should put them side by side. He's taller. He's uh, regardless though. I mean, again, yeah. This regardless. is something that like. I think Kaparos is going to drill into this team before mm-hmm. September because now Amazing. all the yeah you know the, the these teams Macedonia Germany are going to be and Liechtenstein are going to be looking at these tapes and they're going to be saying set pieces that's where we're <laughs> going to win and it's true and if you don't if you don't fix that it's not going to go well and uh, as we saw today um, so we went into halftime two 0 down. Uh, on the back foot, practically the entire half. And uh, four changes were made at halftime. The two central midfielders of uh, Spertian and Angulo were taken off. And we saw Gada Muradian and uh, Artak Grigorian in. And then Khorem Bayramian and Tigran Barsegan came on the wings. And the game changed completely. Like, flipped on its head. Armenia had more possession. Uh, the ball wasn't going through the midfield as easy as it was before. Uh, lots of great pressing, winning the ball high up the pitch and not just giving it away immediately. A uh, very big difference. Uh, Tito, we know that these Kaparos was looking to see what uh, some other players can do, but uh, specifically in that central midfield, what do Grigorian and ha- what does Grigorian have and Muradian have that Spertian and Angulo were missing? I think the defensive part was too different between the the starting midfield and and the other midfield. Uh, in the first half, it was like a freeway. Our midfield, it was like a freeway for for Sweden team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it was more organized. Uh, our midfield was more organized on the second part. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely very noticeable. But um, yep. the, the pressing and the positivity paid off as Vahan Bichakchan uh, scored his first senior national team goal. Armen, we love this kid. You love this kid. Who he doesn't? finally scored his first goal. And we haven't, like, we talk about him so much. He's a future star of Armenian football. And <laughs> Vahan has finally arrived, right? Shout out the uh, Football Gantron's Future Stars of Armenian Football episodes one and two. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was. I was saying he was in the right uh, place and uh, in the, in his mind he just went for it and he looked like a, a commercial, like a kid for a commercial because he he just did it. You know, he just went for it and. Uh, yeah, I really liked his. It was like a standout performance for him. It was already performing very well. We even saw that uh, as one of the game changers last week. Uh, yeah, last week uh, against Croatia, and now he drew everyone's attention by scoring against a very strong Sweden. Very yeah. glad for him. And and speaking of bouncing back, um, I actually failed to mention this in the first half. Yurchenko, uh, there was also a penalty given. I believe it was for a handball on Andre Kallis here. Extremely, extremely yeah. soft penalty. His hand was in an act. That was not. If there was VAR, 1 million percent that's getting overturned. Anyway, Should we talk about the ref a little? Uh, I think we'll I get think into it's... it. I think he, as the game went on, the ref progressively got worse. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, it's a friendly. I don't think we, uh, we should be focusing on the ref as much. Uh, uh, although he did great. It's worth it to not. He greatly influenced the game. I mean, yeah. on on a certain occasion that you had pointed out uh, while we were watching, um, Sako Adamian took a quick free kick t- to play Bayramian in on goal, which would have easily equalized her right there. The ref <laughs> pulls it back. The ref pulls it back because uh, he wanted to give a yellow card to the Sweden player. And then opposite scenario happens in the second half, and the ref waves play on and then gives the yellow card after. So it's... Yeah. There is very noticeable double standard. Exactly. I don't. I don't think, as you said, it's a friendly, so I don't think it's something to be uh, upset about after the game. But it 
did uh, influence the game a lot, and it's something noteworthy. Yeah, definitely. Um, but Yurchenko looked much better in the second half. Um, he also got clattered into literally as the half, uh, the, the first half closed uh, by some idiotic like lunging of, of uh, the Swedish forward. But uh, it was also a very good bounce back from Yurchenko considering how bad that first half went. Um, moving forward, the final goal of the game was scored by Berg in the 84th minute. A uh, very clinical finish and a fantastic through ball, uh, little chip uh, through through the through the defense. And I think it was what we saw on the replay. Foskanian, Armin's favorite defender, Jesus, uh, kept it's always Berg. him. He kept them on side and a very cool finish and that three one from from what looked like was going to be an Armenia comeback. In all honesty, I mean, Barcelona was terrorizing them down that right wing for the entire second <laughs> half. Um, but alas, our nine game undefeated streak is over. Uh, but as Tito said, I mean, it's a friendly, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, as, as Tito said, better to get that loss out of your system now. So, mm. yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, um, so gentlemen, we are going back to our uh, likes, dislikes, and improvements format that we did in the last episode. So I am going to start with you, Arvin. What is one thing that you liked from this match? Hmm, I have the dislike, but okay. If I have to draw one like, because there's always so many things to analyze. But one thing I did like, I guess, is, yeah, how the team bounced back. Yeah. It, it's yep. personality. It's personality and it's mentality. Uh, Tito, what are your thoughts on the team's mentality in that second half? Uh, no, no, it, it's uh, it's something great about this team that we we had a lot of games that we started losing and the team didn't fall uh, didn't yeah. fall apart like maybe True. this happened to us I don't know uh, a couple of years ago and and it was completely different scenario. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the mentality, yeah. the personality when, when of this certain... team is completely different from previous years. Yeah, yeah. When, when a certain someone was on the pitch, right? No, when who? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going there. Don't go. <laughs> Even though I just did. You brought uh, it up. <laughs> okay, well, uh, shot it. Move it on, move it on, move it on. What is one thing that you liked that you saw from this match? I'm going to add to what Tito said. Uh, it's our reaction is different. I like the fact that we 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 keep we keep a consistent way of playing. And imagine if we actually improve it. How much yeah. more we're we going to keep using it. Okay, yeah. yeah, the opponents can learn our, you know, what we're trying to do, but it's not always that you you understand what your opponent what what one particular team is trying to achieve. So mm -hmm. we, we're keeping a very consistent uh, style of play. We know what we're expecting and we know we can expect better. And when we, we're losing 2-1 and after all the you know referee BS and these kind of things, we mm -hmm. still had the hope that we can score a goal because of the way we play. It well, gives us a sense of uh, uh, satisfaction the way we're playing. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, do you think, um, and, and I'll, leave, I'll open this up to all three of you, uh, do you think Spertian is being used correctly within this style of play that Kaparos is trying to achieve? Because he started he both games. At least today, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, that's. I, I ask you guys if you remember, like at the start of the, yeah. uh, when mm -hmm. you know, when I saw that he's playing at the start, I was I was confused. Why he is? Yeah, I think well, he's the more thing is, uh, mm -hmm. an attacking player. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a creative. He's a creative man, a creative mind, and of course, for me, the answer is no. Of course, he's not being used correctly because this system uh, wouldn't really apply to him in his current situation uh, because he needs way more practice way better competition week in week out which he's not getting at the moment because it's mm -hmm. uh, frozen out at Krasnodar 
and that's one problem he needs to get out of the of the way he should move in my opinion he needs to get out of russia and get more mm -hmm. playing time uh well, that's one and second he needs to improve his uh upper body strength he needs to improve his upper body mass because he's very tall for uh, a center midfielder but he's just too skinny man and uh, another thing i would say about him is that of course it's not being used properly right now but as, at least he is being used at least he's like getting to know the teammates mm -hmm. getting to know proper world-class opposition and getting used to all of this yeah he's settling into the environment that he's going to be uh facing in september yeah for, for the next decade or, or so well decade but yeah <laughs> starting with september <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, I think maybe starting right now isn't the right oh, thing yeah, definitely but, but there is definitely more yeah, it's better than nothing, and he's getting the the like you said, the hang of the hang of everything going on. Yeah, uh, he needs to get that those tackles. He needs to receive a little heat to know what's what he will encounter in the future. Yeah, Tito, one positive yeah. takeaway from this match. One positive you. takeaway. I love our, our ha, I love our team. Uh, how our team presses. I love uh, yeah. those kind of of teams mm -hmm. and i think that's going to be a key for our game against germany in my mm -hmm. opinion the worst thing you can do against germany is to weigh them and give them the ball mm -hmm. and just yeah. defend that's yeah. the worst worst thing you can do against germany so if we continue pressing like this and we and other players, of course, because not, exactly. not the ones that we saw in the first half, but for mm -hmm. example, Tico uh, pressing, it's uh, a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a threat to anyone, really, and yeah. uh, to any defense. And uh, I was going to add to that because this those two games we just play those are friendlies we're trying things out and against germany and macedonia in september we're gonna see a very different team uh armenia team of course with everyone hopefully at their peak uh in terms of rhythm and and fatigue and, and form so it will be better i yeah, think it's it, a perfect time actually if you think about it mentally it's it's yeah. it's a very good time mentally because uh and physically. Well, I think most seasons start in uh, August, I think, most of them. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. uh, let's suppose they start three three weeks in, and um, we have our games right now. I don't remember the date, but I I'm sure it's at the start, like in the second week, I think, of September. First so week. Of way, first yeah. week. Okay. So, like, three, give it, like, so that means three weeks. M most players will already be in preseason games as well. So that adds up more. Uh, mm -hmm. mentally they're all going to be ready now it's kind of a little bit of a drain at this it point was, yeah trying things but out it, it's not an excuse i'm not giving an excuse but i no, think no, no, it's no. it's a ready it's a ready format yeah it was good to cap for caparros to, to to know what to correct definitely definitely these friendly games that we got invited by these two massive clubs uh massive national teams apologies yeah uh, I think to the we're Props to the FFA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're grateful for this. Yeah, it, it, these are friendlies that we've, you know, never seen before. We we have mm -hmm. never gotten high profile. I think it's just not. It just hasn't been available to us. And you know what? I, I, like Tito said, this is this was great practice for Germany because Germany is a very good com is like a combination of Croatia and Sweden together, but better. So this was very good for us to play up against these world-class players. Because like, you know, Chadens was saying jokingly while we were watching the game, these aren't defenders in Kazakhstan, you know? These are, these are very, very good <laughs> world-class defenders. But what we also pointed out was how well our team did against them. Mm -hmm. Like Barsegian, Bayramian span some of these Swedish defenders left, right, and center in that second half. Shahoyan just came, freaking Ole, Vahan, fantastic. Again, dribbling through players. It's Again, we have to reiterate for our listeners, 
the result is not important. <laughs> it's it's not trust. Exactly. Of course, of course. There's no fear in the games, of course. Yeah, it's There's not. No fear. And you know what? You know what? The one player that we were missing in that we knew the potential in, in passing terms, but we were just seeing him uh, in defensive roles and defensive uh, episode of, of the game in these two friendly games, is Muradian. And today, Muradian was very well in, uh, in passing terms. He improved yes. our passing game a lot. We needed that. Exactly. And, and again, we, th these are things that we learned. We learned that playing Spezia on deep against most teams isn't going to work. We learned... It's not yet. Not, not yet, yeah, at least. Not yet. Not yet. We learned that Miranian is a super sub. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I don't think he's going to be starting anytime oh, soon. Oh, definitely. No, no. He needs, you know, he needs to move out to, to, to a better league, too. To a Another league. one. Yeah. You know, we learned that, honestly, Jordi Arara, pretty good backup right back option. So, yeah. He you know, needs I, more... Yeah, <laughs> he needs to improve his stats a little bit, it's but amazing. he was great in defense. Yeah, he was he was very good in defense. Uh, you know, Kamoho Vanessian could have done better. Could have done better today, and of course, yeah. the center back partnership, Kalisir. I think it again, was okay. we conceded one goal from open play today, and that was directly on Voskanian leaving them on side. <laughs> the other two <laughs> goals were set piece situations, so. Realistically, our defense under Kaparos has, I, I think, this is the first time we've conceded three goals. No, yeah, first time we've conceded three goals under Kaparos. Um, we haven't failed to score ever under him. We've always scored at least one goal in every game. You see the so, style, attacking. Exactly. So there are a lot of positive takeaways. Um, mm -hmm. But let's focus on the negatives for a little bit. Chadens. What is one thing you disliked from this match? There was a point where I didn't like the the passing, and last time I actually, I actually mentioned uh, clinical passing, clinical finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, the passing was a little bit shaky and too urgent when it wasn't needed. I understand there's an intense. Uh, I understand that the players want to increase intensity, yeah. but. It's not really needed to, you know, rush things. Uh, yeah, it's, and I it's think taking that, steady. I think that urgency you're talking about has a lot to do with uh, what since we're trying things out, everyone wanted to play their own game. Everyone wanted to showcase their own ta each their talents, and that led to them maybe uh, feeling a little pressure. Definitely, yeah, that's totally true, though. So. Um, I, I completely agree, and I think again the calmness in the second half was very apparent. The pass succession percentage dramatically increased, and I think it came down to personnel. Um, let's see, Ottoman, what is one thing you disliked from this match? Yeah, well, um, we have talked about uh, plenty of stuff lately, but I want to focus. A little bit on a more specific matter and building on what Chalent said about passing I think the most important thing that we really really lack today was a quality first pass you know when you recover the ball the, mm -hmm. that first pass from the defense usually is what makes the, the start of a good uh, team play and we just lack that one today uh, whether it was Camo and Ararat uh, most of them, most of the time, uh, the passes were really off. And of course, there's Daron, but th I'm not just even gonna mention that. Like, but mostly Gamo and 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 Ararat could have done better and should have done better in the in that first pass. Yeah, and I think this is um, unfortunately a situation that we're kind of gonna be in, and this was maybe a good idea of what not to do in the first half against Macedonia in September, because we have to remember, uh, Haroyan yeah. is suspended, Barsegan is suspended, Bayramian is suspended. So we have now seen other options of players. And of course, you know, I think what's important to mention, uh, Mokhitaryan is going to be included in that September squad. Uh, Briasko Balakian is going to be included in that September squad. So 
you're, it's not going to be these types of, of players starting. Miranian is probably not going to start up top. Of course it's probably, not. It's going to be Adamian and Balakian, and it's going to be Mkhitaryan on the left or, or, and Vahan on the right, for example. And you know, you know what, bro? This is going to be probably an unpopular take, especially since uh, from this uh, friendly window. But against Macedonia, I would not start Camo. I would start uh, Ararat and Hovo in the left backs. In the, I in know the why. Backs. Yeah, I know we why. Need, we need quality first passes and quality defense. Expose them. Yeah, and, and I think um, when Kamo goes on his runs... Uh, he doesn't that, come, come, come He doesn't back. come back, yeah. yeah. And, and we get exposed. I mean, look, hopefully that's something Kaparos takes into consideration. Uh, Kamo, oh, yeah. it seems that... He, he likes to start Kamo, even though we have other actual left-back options. Like, if we want a very defensive-minded left-back, honestly, and I said this in the group chat before the game, Hako Pakobian, I think just start him at left-back. I yeah. think we, we should have seen him there. It was a waste playing him in attacking midfield today. He, he, I think if he got a good 45 minutes at left-back, we would have had a very good opportunity to see how, you know, what that could look like against Macedonia. But, you know, unfortunately, yeah, but... Kaparos had other ideas. But if, if we had started uh, Hagop at left back, that would have meant starting uh, Kamo at left mid. And we all remember the last time Kamo played as a wide midfielder. Yeah, it didn't work out that um <laughs> At all. Uh, Tito, what is yeah, one thing uh, you did not like? I think I'm going to say the same thing uh, that I said when the episode started. Uh, the midfield. I did not like the midfield at all. It mm. was way too disorganized. Uh, and I think that it, it was awful on defense, uh, awful on passing. And I think that's uh, why the entire midfield was uh, subbed for the second half. Yeah. And I think this, this plays really nicely into our, our third segment, which is improvements that we would like to see and i think there are some very obvious ones here and that we've already talked about because of how much we focused on you know things that didn't go right in this match uh personnel which we already know is going to be addressed so these a lot of um our starters didn't start this match uh and you know that led and we were down 2-0 because of it and secondly more efficient passing that's something that we saw, again, dramatically better in the second half than in the first half. And that was due to that personnel change. Um, and any other types of improvements that you guys can think of? Um, well, <laughs> yeah, for the for the more experienced players, I, I don't think we have seen a very um, mature uh, window. Uh, much to my dismay, and I understand that, uh, as Caparros himself himself has said in press conferences, that players like Horik Sakotiko uh, were very tired or very uh, rested and were not at their physical uh, primes, but still uh, they should have done overall better in terms of passing and just not losing their minds, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think it's important that we remember and we, you know, understand that we just played two world class teams and yeah. we drew we drew up against the runners up of the last World Cup. I I in, in my wildest dreams I never thought that would even happen, but <laughs> it's it's a process and it's something that we got to trust. And of course, I mean, as someone someone pointed this out in, in on the Reddit post match thread uh we're not france we don't we don't go in expecting to win every single game so <laughs> and it's wrong to do that you should never ever go in expecting armenia to exactly. stay undefeated for 10 fucking years well oh, excuse my language that's <laughs> <laughs> come on this is a family show i don't i know i know I you know, know have you looked at well, our i think it was 84 percent of our demographics are between the ages of 18 and 34 so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, our audience is the best. I know. We have a good audience. And we love it when you guys interact with us. So interact with us some more. Um, it's so obviously because they, the demographic is pretty much 
like us. So yeah, of course they're gonna be awesome. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> that concludes the June friendlies. Uh, we again drew one one against Croatia and lost three one uh, against Sweden. These were both away matches. Also something that we should point out. Uh, I think overall we learned a lot from this June friendly matches. We it was have a great a of, window. It was a great window. Lots of good takeaways. Uh, I'm sure Kapados knows players he is not going to call up again. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Kapados, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? September is <sighs> three months away. We have three matches. Again, we go away to Macedonia, and then we are away to Germany, and then we are home to Liechtenstein. It is going to be a very, very big week. Um, so, a lot to think about. Uh, the national team is going to get a very good rest. A lot of these players are going to go on vacation now, uh, since we're not playing in the Euros, of course. Um, and yeah, I think. Any other thoughts, gentlemen? Mm, no, I can't wait for September. Uh, <laughs> I think we saw a lot, and it's good. Yeah. It's good that we saw a lot. The more we saw, the better. It was like a, it was like a practice match, but with genuine stars from all over Europe. Mm -hmm. You know what I can't wait for? What? Well, the, it can be what? anything. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, knowing knowing me, you know that that's the case. But no, especially I I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for Vato to break La Liga strikers. I, I hope so. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not going to see him in action for a while, I think, until preseason for, for, for Cadiz. Uh, but, Cadiz, you know, Cadiz, Cadiz, Cadiz. Cadiz. Our Spanish, uh, Cadiz. Yeah, Cadiz. And unfortunately, he's suspended for Macedonia, so I think the next time we see Haroyan oh, in the yes, national don't team remind is, me. is going to be against Germany, which is going to be a humongous game, hopefully, um, we come out on top. Um, at this point, you never know, man. But anyway, uh, that's gonna be it. Hey, for this. Oh. maybe maybe Vato can break some someone from Macedonia, and it would be like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are at, at least count. three players on La Liga from Macedonia. Yeah, so they do. Uh, Elmas, I Bardi. think, is the top one. El, yeah. Uh, yeah. El, no, Bardi, 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 Bardi. 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 Uh, Elmas, Elmas is in Serie A. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barakovsky and well, a goalkeeper, Dimitrievsky. Uh, yeah. Oh, you never know. In a, in a set piece. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a little elbow. <laughs> a corner. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. All right. <laughs> well, that is it for football. Gentron, we will be back in probably a couple weeks' time. Um, there are some upcoming matches the women's national team is going to be playing friendly against kazakhstan and the armenia under 21s have a competitive match for the uh under 21 championships qualifiers on tuesday uh so okay. hopefully oh, Gido. yeah ajido uh, and, and Nefsesian and kachumian are flying after this match to go meet up with the under 21s so hopefully we get a victory there and keep this armenian train rolling and uh, that's going to be it for us today. Thank you for listening to Football Gentron. I have been Autumn, and on behalf of Chadens, Onman, and Tito, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>